In today's video, we're going to cover the symptoms of candida overgrowth and try to answer the question, how do I know if I should be concerned about candida? Should I get tested? Should this thing even be on my radar? So first and foremost, what I will say right off the bat is that candida is notoriously difficult to treat and diagnose because there's just a sheer lack of understanding in the medical literature and in the human species. We don't understand fungi nearly as much as we understand bacteria, specifically the fungi that live in and on us on a day to day. And what's more is that the symptoms of candidiasis, of candida overgrowth and CIFO can be very nonspecific and difficult to pin on candida specifically. So for example, uh, one of the really classic symptoms is fatigue. Well, you could also be fatigued because you're hypothyroid, because you're anemic, because you're inflamed, because you got crappy sleep or you're a crappy sleeper in general. Like there's a million different reasons why you could have that one symptom. So you can't necessarily look at a list and say, oh, I have fatigue, I have brain fog, therefore I have candida. You have to really do your due diligence, rule out the things that can be ruled out with testing and then go with the most likely scenario after a thorough history and thorough testing. So that being said, things that can alert you to a candida problem. I'm actually gonna link a link in the doobly-doo below. There's a questionnaire that has a really interesting backstory called the FRDQ7, and it was used in a research study. But what that does is it tries to give you like a self quiz and a number system where you could assign yourself a score and then that score will help kind of alert you whether or not you need to care about candida or think about that in your health. So I'll link that in the thing below. But moving on, some of the highlights to really think about. Women, if you are a frequent vaginal yeast infection gal, if that is a, cur a current or a recent struggle for you, or if it's a chronic struggle, you can bet you've got candida in your gut. Um, I'll actually link, there's a couple of papers that I found on this, but I'll link the most interesting one that I found in the doobly-doo below also. But there's a pretty strong correlation with an overgrowth of fungal communities and candida in the gut with recurrent vaginal candida symptoms. Uh, number two is if you have oral thrush, if you have a thick white coat or a nasty like persistent white coat on your tongue or anywhere in your oropharynx that either does not respond ever or go away ever, or it responds to anti-candida or antifungal things, whether they be natural, pharmaceutical, or dietary, you could bet you've got candida in your gut. So if you think about it, the mouth is really just the very, very, very beginning of the gut tube. So that's all connected anatomically. You could bet that there's candida elsewhere in your GI tract. Two other things that alert me to candida as a possibility when I'm talking to a new patient is a strong history of antibiotic use and resistance to standard SIBO treatment. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about small intestinal fungal overgrowth or SIFO in another video. But if you have SIBO, you've done all the antibacterial things like Zyfaxin and you have not responded, there's a strong likelihood that you also have CFO that you're dealing with and you need to tackle the candida part of that piece. So look for symptoms that could tip you off. Take a look at that FRDQ7 questionnaire and a little bit on its backstory that's really interesting. Do some testing when you're able to and just keep your wits about you, but try not to use nonspecific symptoms like brain fog, fatigue, autoimmunity, because those really aren't necessarily gonna point you in the right direction 99% of the time. Like, subscribe, share.